Good morning and uh, thank you everyone for coming on. We're just entering participants now. We'll just give it another minute and then we'll get started. Okay, we're at two past 11, so we'll kick off and we'll um, keep entering participants as they, as they join. Uh, thank you everyone for joining us today for a Meet Business Women Masterclass. My name is Catherine Heffernan. I'm the chair of the Australian Meet Business Women Committee. And on behalf of the committee, some of them who are probably joining us today, I would like to say thank you uh, for joining us for this uh, free masterclass. And uh, shortly I'll be introducing our speaker today. Also uh, joining us is the is Ashley Gray, uh, current chair of the Meet Business Women New Zealand Committee, and I would also like to welcome all our um, members and non-members joining us from New Zealand today. Wonderful to have uh, our sisters across the Tasman uh, online as well. Uh, I would like to acknowledge the Territory Partners. AMIC is the exclusive Australian Territory Partner for Australia uh, and Meat Industry Association of New Zealand, Beef and Lamb New Zealand and Beef and Lamb New Zealand Inc. are the Territory Partners in New Zealand. So an acknowledgement to those. I'd also like to take this uh, moment to thank all of our global strategic partners of Meat Business Women. Uh, without them, we wouldn't be able to uh, do these incredible events. If you're a current member of Meet Business Women, you're probably aware of some of the incredible benefits that we have. If you're not, I'll just do a quick uh, flick through. So you get access to exclusive events uh, online and in person. It's great to see as we come out of COVID, we're back to face-to-face -face events. So keep monitoring the website to see any upcoming events that are happening. Uh, this meeting is actually being recorded, so you can actually access uh, and view any of the events uh, post uh, in the recording. There's also access to exclusive content and a bank of resources uh, for relevant industry documents. There's also a global mentoring platform that brings both mentees and mentors together across the global community. And we also do uh, yearly uh, gender representation reports and surveys. So uh, hop on the website to have a look at some of that content. For our Australia uh, members, we have a face-to-face -face conference scheduled for Wednesday the 27th of April at the Sofitel Darling Harbour in Sydney. So uh, pencil that date. There will be some communications coming out soon along with some of the keynote speaker lineup as we prepare that planning. So today uh, I'm very happy to introduce uh, Ollie Lelivre uh, from uh, Humans of Agriculture. Sorry, one moment. Technology. Sorry, guys. Uh, Ollie Lelivre is the founder of Humans of Agriculture, apologies for that, uh, which is a social enterprise that brings agriculture community together to connect, discuss, uh, laugh and share their passion one story at a time. Uh, for more than a decade, Ollie has worked in a variety of roles and a variety of sectors in agriculture, both in Australia and uh, overseas. He's been inside the farm gate to corporate advisory and consulting outside the farm gate. He's gone from ag tech startups to global agri-food sustainability events. And he's very passionate about highlighting the importance of agriculture that shapes the world we live in and seeks to do this through the power of storytelling. So uh, on behalf of the Australian Committee and the New Zealand Committee, I welcome Ollie to us today and to hand over and welcome him. Thank you. Thanks, Catherine. I'll share my screen. The technology is going to work here. Cool. Hopefully you guys can see it. Is that all good, Ash? Perfect. Um, thank you very much. I'd just firstly like to kick off by acknowledging the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation. They're also known as, uh, as Sydney. Um, it's where I'm coming to you guys from and pay my respects to their elders past, present and emerging. Um, today, I'm so excited. You guys are such an incredible organisation. 
I think, yeah, just in the last week, you look at the footprint that you're getting and, and the traction uh, you are taking. You're, you're very much um, an, an influential voice uh, in, in agriculture globally. And Laura meeting with uh, the UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson is just incredible. So uh, I think you guys just continue to go from strength to strength despite the, the last couple of years. So thank you for having me here. It's, it's really exciting. Um, today, I wanted to talk about um, sharing your story and creating deeper connections. I think there's probably two angles I'd like to come at it from, one being a, a bit of a personal angle and share with you a bit more about my story and background. And I'd also then like to talk and use humans of agriculture as a bit of a case study of how we've started to build traction and credibility um, and really just taking a, a steady approach in terms of how we do it to make sure that uh, it actually does have tangible outcomes at the other end. I get my computer working. I just, I just want to start off with this photo. Uh, one, because I took it in South Africa, which is quite cool. But um, to that, this was taken in, in April of 2019, which was actually a, a really transformational year for me. Up until this stage, I'd been working in an ag tech startup for a couple of years. We were working on food traceability. And uh, I actually left that, that role at the beginning of April, headed over to South Africa. Um, my brother was getting married over there and, and we took the chance to have a bit of a look around. Um, I'm not sure if anyone has ever been over to South Africa and, and hopefully you have, if we're in person, we'd be able to raise a few hands. But um, it, it really kind of, this, this is where Humans of Agriculture was born out of South Africa. It, it gave me time and space to think about kind of what mattered to me. And um, yeah, I think up, up to that point, it had been many years leading to, to, to South Africa and, and then kind of the last couple of years have taken off of that. But one afternoon we were, we we're heading through Cape Town uh, we're getting a, a taxi through town and uh, I'm, I'm not sure if people have been to South Africa. For me, it was incredibly eye-opening. You've got the shanty towns as you leave uh, the city uh, and it's, it, it is such a contrast between the points where, where affluence exists and you've got mansions and literally over the fence, you've got shanty towns and extreme poverty. And for me, um, the, maybe just pure, purely by coincidence, the, the driver we had was a, a man from Zimbabwe and he asked what I did back home. I mentioned that I was involved in agriculture and at that stage I was actually going back farming. Um, and, and he started to open up about what his life mission was. He was working as a taxi driver. He wanted to earn enough money so he could buy a block of land back in Zimbabwe, farm enough livestock and enough crops so that he could feed his family. In, in essence, what he was talking about was subsistence farming. And I think for me, it, it, was, it was kind of a, a, a mix of moments, but where where things were just put into perspective of in Australia at the time, or, although they are important conversations that we were having around debates of traditional and alternate proteins, the real perspective of what the world's like beyond our shores and, and the markets and the world we live in and the role that agriculture plays really started um, to come to the fore and, and highlighted, and it was highlighted for me. Later in 2019, and Catherine, as you mentioned, um, I was working on an event in Australia called Global Table. We partnered up with an organisation out of Europe, out of Italy, uh, called, Globe, uh, called Seeds and Chips. And the event we held in Melbourne was called the Global Innovation Summit. And it was basically looking at how in Asia Pacific we could have conversations around sustainable food systems and bring together entrepreneurs, corporates, government to actually have real conversations around the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals and what does a sustainable food system look like and who are the players that we need to actually get there? For me, I think if I was to look at one photo, probably that really sums up uh, a lot of what I do and, and a lot of what I care about. Um, if you start to look through, yeah, the themes and the boxes in the backgrounds, you've got words around partnerships, you've got um, things around life on land, you've got education, you've got food waste. But I think um, for me and where agriculture really comes into it and what I'm deeply passionate about is, is the role it plays in shaping the world we live in. I think now more than ever, you look at the last few years, the discussions we're having around greenhouse gases and climate, you look at waste and plastics, you look at water use, land use, and then start to look at the next 30 years um, and how we will actually feed close to 10 billion people on a diet that will be healthy and nutritious with fewer natural resources. It's something which is it's incredibly challenging, but I think also the state where the industry is at now, it's incredibly exciting because we're getting such an array of people from all kinds of backgrounds that are looking to come into the space uh, and have, have an impact. I'm just gonna jump across. So if everyone can grab their phones um, and 
phones or, or website, we're just going to do a quick little slido, which is basically a fancy word for a survey. Just because I'm keen to find out where everyone's coming from. So if you go to slido.com or on your mobile, you'll be able to scan that QR code at the top left. I'll just be keen if you can answer the first question of what area of the supply chain are you working in? If it's not listed there, just choose the one that's closest to you. A few marketers and HR people coming through, as expected. Just give another couple of seconds on that and then we'll go to the next question. Beautiful. I'm gonna jump to the next one. I want you to think of the company Disney, the Walt Disney Company. What do you think of um, and what first comes to mind when you think of them? You're probably thinking I'm loopy at this stage. So why is this guy talking about Disney? Mickey Mouse is coming up a lot as expected. There's a few emotions coming through. So we've got some kind of tangible and physical things around Mickey Mouse, then also seeing innovation and animation, happiness. That's really cool. We'll go one more question if we can. So when you think of agriculture, what comes to mind? I should say the bigger the words get, the more they've been said, but we're seeing some really good array of, of words here. Some seasonal challenges coming through, which does make sense. It is front of mind at the moment. Give that another couple of seconds. Great, there's some really good diversity in that. So thank you. Well, I think I'll have to come back to that a bit later on because I can't think that quickly. Just picking off the, first, the, the top couple. Um, community hard work, global food production, earth, technology, feeding the world. In front of mind is food, farmers, farming, livestock, and opportunity features pretty prominently as well. Beautiful. Well, that covers that up. Thank you. There is a bit of method behind that madness and hopefully it's going to come out uh, as we talk to this a bit more. Um, in terms of this question, I think is something that's really kind of defined my career so far. It was what I got asked in year 12. Uh, in terms of my background, I grew up in Sydney. Uh, I've kind of come full circle 10 years later, or 11 years later, I'm back in Sydney now. But uh, this, this was a question which a mate actually asked me. I remember we were playing backyard cricket and he said, what's the future in agriculture? It was a discussion that I'd pretty similarly been having with the careers advisor as well, where they were saying, why don't you go down a generic business degree? Um, maybe that's the path. And then, yeah, at, at this stage, agriculture to them and, and their understanding was that it was all about purely just inside the farm gate um, and, and, yeah, basically hard labour. I think for, for us, um, this question is really around, well, how do we actually shift this stigma and shift the dialogue around what is agriculture and, and show it to people in a way that, they can understand um, how they're interacting with it. A couple of quick photos just over my career so far. Um, so I was a Knox boy. I had the chance to go back to them when I was working at a startup. That was um, 
my, my second job out of university. Uh, we were doing a mobile app, basically looking at food traceability. I think what was interesting, if I go back to that last slide around well, what the future was in agriculture, I left school three years after the first iPhone came out. Within five years uh, of leaving school, I was working in a tech startup that was doing food traceability globally uh, based off a phone app. Uh, basically, yeah, but those businesses, ag tech, the discussions that we're having now actually didn't really exist when I was leaving school. And so in, in a decade, these conversations, and even in half a decade, these conversations and opportunities are evolving continually. And I think that's why um, it is so exciting for us as the last digitised industry and, and having such a footprint globally. In terms of, I've mixed my time very much between in the paddock and in, the, uh, in, in boardrooms. Um, I, I had the chance to work with KPMG uh, yeah, working on a number of projects with both government and corporates. That was really exciting. I, I think, yeah, I probably feel more at home in the paddock than I do around a board table, but it's something which I've really enjoyed and, and just the opportunities which the industry can give you. In terms of today, what I want to talk to, there's probably five key points um, around this. When it, when it comes to engaging with an audience, whether it's for yourself or uh, as a business and only use humans of agriculture as uh, as the case study here, but really behind your communications or, or your engagement, what's the purpose behind it? Why, why are you doing it? What do you hope to get out of it? Also be really clear on who, who you're talking to. What is it that they're interested in? At what stage of the journey are they, are they on? So for instance, rather than just coming straight at an educational um, angle and, and talking facts to people, is it that they purely just want awareness? I, I like to think of it as a funnel. If you bring people in, you want to introduce them at the top of the funnel, you keep them engaged, and then from there you can start to actually advance their understanding through it. But it, it is a pro, it's a process and it takes progress as well. In terms of that, what's the message you're trying to get through and how do you want it to be delivered? That comes down to where are you talking to them um, at, whether that's online, is it, uh, is it face to face, et cetera. And then I think a critical question which people need to ask and one, uh, I'm, I'm always asking myself with humans of agriculture is, are we on the journey together? Am I just walking ahead and saying what I think needs to be said because that's my opinion or am I actually taking stock of, of where the conversation's at, how we're conversing and are they actually learning and understanding with me and coming on that journey? Um, this, I just thought I'd include this. This is a little backflip to 2013. Uh, I've got a brand new work shirt, obviously. Fashion was a bit different back then. Um, I, th I still think I look quite cool, but um, we'll leave that up to the crowd. But I, I was filling out a university uh, scholarship application and uh, it, it asked um, what your envisaged career was. Uh, I think if I actually look at this, it's just as true today as what it was back then. And probably although it may, I only discovered it um, the other day as I was going through some old photos and files, but I think that the future of agriculture back in 2013 and still today has a gap, particularly in relating to marketing to consumers and communicating necessary information. Um, as a bold 21 year old, I said that I intend to be an industry leader looking at an industry leader in the movement towards transparency of industry practices, as well as the need to educate consumers. So I think it's, yeah, quite funny how things come in roundabouts, um, but I'd say yeah, just as true today in terms of that purpose of why I'm doing what I'm doing as what it was back then when I really kind of was fairly naive and um, not really aware of what, the, what was happening outside the farm gate. So in terms of humans of agriculture, we've got three kind of key issues that uh, I'm looking at addressing. The first being that there's, that there's a disconnect between the community and agriculture. In 2017, there was a survey, 83% of Australians listed their connection to agriculture as distant or non-existent. I think for us as an industry, we see the social pressures we get. Having people that are unaware or making assumptions about something can be really detrimental to us. And that's something which I see we can address through humans of agriculture. The second, actually looking inside the farm gate or yeah, within industry is around that representation. Um, Auctions Plus earlier this year, I, I worked with them, but the, the gavel that um, was a survey of farmers uh, came out with some data so that 65% of farmers are concerned about the reputation of the sector in, in Australia more broadly. And then I think something we see coming up time and time again is that mainstream media is misrepresenting what happens in agriculture and 77% of uh, people or, or farmers actually agreed with that. 
so where I want to play and where I see humans of agriculture sitting is right in the middle of this circle. If I was to say what we are, and it's um, taken a bit of a evolution to, to kind of part myself from it, but uh, as a business, we're a social enterprise that um, wants to do good. Uh, how we do this is we're a modern media company that is going to talk about uh, and with the community on what actually is agriculture and helping define that in a way that they can understand and also see the influence that agriculture is having in the world around them. For me, the, the early stages and coming back to setting it up, it was all about being content led. I, I didn't want to just become another marketing business. Um, it was all about setting ourselves up for success. And so um, it, it was never commercially orientated in, in the early days and it's probably still not um, to my detriment, uh, but in terms of it was all about creating a brand. And, and if I'm to use probably the, the easiest way I was looking at how, to, how can I set this up uh, as a business that's basically an influencer brand within agriculture, that businesses see how we share stories and in the style that we do it in, and then they see value in actually coming to us and saying, we'd love for you to talk um, or, or to talk about our business and talk about our industry um, alongside us. And you do it your way because we've seen what you do You've got authenticity, you've got engagement, and you've got a relationship with your audience, which would actually be really beneficial um, to our customers. I'll talk to some of the stats as well um, later on in terms of what's really setting us apart uh, as part of that. So if I was just to outline our purpose, um, we're, we're looking to bring people together. We look to do it in a, in a fun and engaging way. We want to have a laugh. We want to be real. Uh, but we actually do want to talk about some of those bigger challenges and, and bigger opportunities that hopefully um, agriculture can play a, a key role in. For us, um, I set the goal very early on of 10,000 stories. Uh, I went to yeah uni, I looked through my Facebook friends and I thought, oh, well, if I was to choose a thousand, it might be a, a little bit um, too easy. We definitely know we need that yet. So it wasn't easy, but it would have been far more achievable than 10,000. And what we're hoping to get out of this is that we want every story to be, uh, we genuinely want to be coming across as curious. I, I'm going to find out things because we're interested in, we want to be captivated. So we're actually in and listening uh, to it. We want to talk about things that we're passionate about, but also with people that are passionate about what they're doing. And I see something that has really come to the fore as part of this is this supporting role that humans of agriculture can play when it comes to getting people to talk about what it is that they do and, and start to go at a deeper level than just um, general talk. I think, yeah, if I started off, I thought, oh, we're just going to talk to the general public about this. Uh, but it actually takes a, a huge supporting role to, to nearly accompany people and sit alongside them and take the time to actually get to the level of conversation that we need in order to really build that emotional connection um, with our community. In terms of what we're trying, there's probably four things when it comes to sharing a story that we're trying uh, to get across or, or to get our audience to feel. In terms of what it is, um, we will, people to either see relatability uh, in it, so that person actually has a similar story to me, or that could be me in a few years. Um, inspiring, so depending on, on what it is, it could be stories overcoming adversity, it could be, um, yeah, people talking about a, a serious challenge that they've had in their life and how, um, yeah, they've been able to overcome that through agriculture. Um, grow people's understanding. So we want them to walk away having a, a key takeaway from the stories that, they're, that they've um, engaged with. And then similar to that, my experience in South Africa, it's really looking in at that perspective piece and, and have we, through our stories, been able to open someone's eyes to an area or, or something that they actually weren't aware of before. How are we going to do this? And these are kind of the non-negotiables that we are always real and we're approaching this in an honest and authentic way. We're not coming at it with an agenda. Um, but yeah, we, we're genuinely interested in people and, and chatting, sitting down, talking with them and helping them share their story, but actually just getting an understanding for ourselves. That curiosity is something which has always uh, been a part of me and, and as part of the brand as well. And then the, finally, we, we want to make sure that it's engaging and that comes from spending the time uh, to make sure that, yeah, the, 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 the story gets the respect that it deserves. How are we doing it? So it started off purely just as, uh, as photo and written kind of quotes in the first stage. 
probably now more so sitting in the middle of what we're most well known for is our podcast, um, weekly podcast since March last year. And then I have done one video, but video is kind of the, the next evolution of where we want, want to go uh, and, and see a real opportunity and yeah, working with businesses and brands and industries uh, to tap into our audience, but also look at talking about what they do uh, in a different way. In terms of our community, so uh, we, we're touching on just under 22,000 followers. We've shared 200 stories. Probably a few of you will be chuckling that it's a long way from 10,000, but uh, we're getting there. Um, we're, we've got 70 oh, people engaging from 73 countries, um, but yeah, a majority following is actually in Australia um, with 30% of them in capital cities. So I, I think, yeah, it, we've got a really, we've got kind of two key audiences. We've got, um, we really want to take the ag community alongside us as part of the journey. And we see that as kind of like the secondary audience that will come if we do a good enough job, they'll support what we're doing. But that primary audience is really tapping into to capital cities. And um, if you look at our uh, age demographics, it's, it's looking at millennials and Gen Zs as I think they're the people that, um, one, they're relatable to me, they're similar ages to myself, but uh, they're, they're really starting to come through um, their respective industries and roles and will be in fairly influential positions uh, over the next few years. What's fairly unique from my understanding um, is our, our audience. So 65% of them are actually female and 35% male. I think if we look at um, the cross-section of agriculture as a male-dominated industry, I think that so, so many of our followers are a female is something that's really exciting to see. And I think, um, yeah, it, in terms of stories, we're, at, we're sitting at about a 50-50 split between male and females who, who have shared theirs. What we've, what we've done, and it was always intended this way, um, we, it was always about celebrating the individual, uh, but, but that role that the individual plays in the collective. So the why is essentially silent, but we want to sit down with people, share their story, and then that actually slots in to the bigger story, which is about Australian agriculture or about your industry or about your business or about the role that agriculture plays globally. And, and that's something which uh, we, we continue to do um, and, and set up themes based off of that. This is, since the very beginning, it was all about getting people to, to see the influence that agriculture is having in the world around them, talking about it in a way that um, they actually understand it. So taking it away from talking about cattle and sheep in paddocks to talking about the meals that they're having, to talk about health and nutrition, the things that they can actually understand, but then allowing them to come back and, and think of that funnel. It's introducing them at the top of that funnel to then allow them to come along that journey. There's just five quick uh, people I'll touch on here. First being Elsie, um, she's special in, in the sense that she was the very first story and the first person I contacted to write about. Elsie uh, talked in her story about bringing some friends out from Brisbane and for the first time them seeing what a cotton crop was and actually seeing what life was like beyond the Great Divide. The second is an absolute gun and someone who our industry is so fortunate to have. Georgia Beatty came, she's got a tech background uh, has her own, had her own startups as well at various stages and then started to see that kind of her, some of her lifestyle choices were potentially conflicting where her personal values sit. George is now the CEO of Buller Park, um, just in terms of context. She, she was, her business that she had was a, um, a single serve wine glass that was available at festivals. She sold that business because she saw, um, yeah, just the, the waste that was coming from that. But George's work now at Buller Park, she's uh, Australia's largest organic mushroom farmer. Um, I'm not sure how many she's actually got in her team, but she's an absolute dynamo in terms of uh, her vision and where she's taking that business. Someone with a tech background, with people skills, who deeply cares about the world around them uh, in our industry is just a huge asset to have. Um, Mark LeBroy, so he's a chef for those of you uh, from Australia familiar with Three Blue Ducks. Mark was the first podcast guest I had. This is all about trying to shift and, and show the breadth uh, of people that are actually influencing our food supply chains. Mark, um, it talks, he's a hunter as well, but he talks about kind of a, as a chef, you're the touch point between the consumer and everything else that's happened down the supply chain. For them to put an amazing meal on the plate, uh, 
takes a, a lot of work, but to actually be serving up produce, which is full of flavour, and that actually goes back down the supply chain to what practices have happened and then how it's been stored and transported. Um, and, and he also gave a really interesting point was that for some of his customers that want to come in and they want to know about the journey of the beef and where it came from, as a chef and, and as the touch point of the consumer, it's really important that he's able to convey that message. But also, too, that some consumers just aren't interested in that and they're just looking for an amazing meal. So there's a real balance. And, um, yeah, I think people like Mark is just incredible to have in our industry. The next one is um, Steph Getty. She's a, a nutritionist. And, and Steph spoke of, about, yeah, basically health and nutrition, but also she's got a, a diary which is around um, seasonal eating and introducing that back into people's diets for overall health. And then the finally being a mate, Will, who's a very progressive family farm, uh, hugely into soil health, um, soil management, and looking fairly innovatively at opportunities uh, from that. So we kind of went across the supply chain, went outside traditional agriculture, but actually defining these people as having um, quite a key influence in the industry. Hopefully this is going to work. Um, Sammy O'Brien is a TV presenter with Channel 7. Um, and I found what she said and kind of the, the tone of our conversation really interesting. But do you see yourself as actually part of the agriculture industry? No, I don't. I don't at all. To me, I think I'd say with everything you do, like absolutely you're influencing other people to try and make the world better through your involvement in food and fibre. Yeah, I guess, definitely then. Yeah, I'm a human of agriculture, Ollie. I think that piece where, so Sammy's got a, a quite a large urban following in terms of people following her. A lot of her content is based around agriculture and promoting the industry, but we've got people like Sammy who are such valuable assets to our industry don't actually see themselves as part of it. And I think that's part of what we're hoping to do with Humans Agriculture is bring people like Sammy in and actually see the influence that they're having and the real positive role they play in our industry. I'm going to skip through a couple of slides here. Um, I'll go across that. I just wanted to talk to some of the, and there was 25% of the audience uh, um, marketers. So in terms of our stats, the, the vast majority of our content is all, all organic, no paid um, advertising behind it. This story, um, was incredibly inspiring. A fellow called Ricky, he suffered an accident, left him with burns to um, a considerable amount of his body. But in terms of his approach and his resilience and how he overcame adversity and just yeah, in a few short paragraphs, so you can see those statistics um, and just how incredibly engaging this content is and how much it actually resonates with people. Um, yeah, that was seen a, a quarter of a million times um, shared 862 times. The comments were incredible, nearly 800 comments on it as well. So I had to turn my phone off from notifications after that. This is just another one, and, and this comes back to supporting the individual, I think. So Jazz um, were, was a young girl, finished school in Sydney, wasn't sure what to do next. Um, but, yeah, she, she ended up going up north working on the station uh, and working as a photographer. And oh, sorry, and, and getting really into her photography. But I think for someone who was feeling quite lost uh, only a period earlier, you look at the kind of comments that are coming through there and what that can do for self confidence and, and lifting people. Um, truly is incredible. Um, I'll just finish with a couple of stats here. So, in terms of growth, uh, yeah, really proud in the sense that there's no big peaks in that. I think that would show that something's gone viral, but because we're growing, um, fairly organically, it's allowed us to maintain that engagement um, with our audience. Our podcast, so uh, yeah, moment of honesty here, those dips were when I stopped stopped posting uh, over Harvest and then uh, as I transitioned, moved cities as well earlier this year, but um, we're now heading towards 9,000 downloads. Sorry, we've just lost Ollie for a second there. We'll give him a minute, he may reconnect. But while we're waiting for that in the chat, if you have any questions, see some summer coming through, feel free to pop them in and hopefully when he pops back up, we can wrap up with a bit of a Q&A. Hey, Ollie. 
While he's off as well, I just want to mention uh, Global UK founder uh, Laura Ryan was invited uh, to number 10 Downing Street uh, this week by the Prime Minister uh, as part of a food and drink event. So she was uh, in a great little photo with uh, Boris uh, this week on socials and uh, very great recognition and profile for Meet Business Women globally. So um, just a little tidbit there. Sorry. He's back, he's back. I'm on my phone, so sorry about that. Just had a bad out. Who would have thought? Um, <laughs> but, yeah, I, I think let's throw the questions. I've gone for long enough. Yeah, let's do that. I'll just um, go through the chat here. All right, thank you for that, Ollie. That was really great. I think the power going out was probably timing anyway, because you were about to wrap up so much uh, to absorb. I wrote down quite a few little questions myself, but then I'm a comms marketing person, but I'll just go through some of the questions that have come through. Um, one of them was around, this is probably a big question that uh, may not have an easy answer, but why do you think um, as a global industry that we can't, particularly I think around meat, that we can't align and create that one voice and counteract the anti-meat narrative that's going on? And what do you think we can do to change that? Oh, yeah, big question. In terms of one centralised voice, I'd say, in terms of, and this is my opinion, but I think centralised, like we're seeing decentralisation across every aspect of our lives, whether that's in workplaces or not. I don't I personally don't think one um, key industry group or one key body is going to be sufficient in this. I, I think, yeah, when it comes to you look at engaging, if, if you're putting all your eggs in one basket, you're hoping that that person that is, is representing you or that organisation is really resonating with your audience. So I think that's where basically smaller, albeit of any size, but uh, multiple organisations are, are, are going to be key as part of that. And I also think in terms of the, the anti um, meat discussion. I, I like to think of it as a bell curve, but we're really focusing on that five or ten percent that are the extremists that we won't actually change their views, or are we are we actually looking at engaging with those people who we can have a real discussion with and, and take them along a journey? Yeah, very good point. It's very topical at the moment as well, particularly with the Senate inquiry on meat labelling. It's become a bit of a us versus them and it'd be nice to see that you can have an alignment regardless of choice rather than it turning into, yeah. Uh, another uh, comment from Maddie Hamilton. Great talk, Ollie. Her question is, how do you go about trying to attract consumers to your content when, you may, when they may not be actively looking for it? So what spaces are you interacting with in to achieve that outside of industry engagement? Yeah, I think it, it probably comes back to a couple of things. One being guests um, and, yeah, looking at who are those that have um, some, yeah, more, uh, or not, not necessarily every guest, but who are those guests that I can bring in which are going to um, allow me to get access to a new audience. Um, in, in terms of, yeah, how we're resonating, I think that just comes to being across multiple mediums and, and talking about um, that, relatability piece. I think earlier this year we did a series around mental health. Yes, we we're talking to people who are involved in agriculture, but there, a lot of those key take-home messages are, are applicable to anyone. And, uh, and yeah, the, I, I received quite a number of messages from people um, in different areas that, yeah, in urban areas that that actually resonated with them. Yeah. So your platforms are still pretty much the, the main four in terms of socials but is there anything else that you get to get that wider audience reach, as you were saying, to bridge that gap between urban and and 30%, I think, is actually really great to have followers in the capital cities. But, um, yeah, have you, how are you thinking about how to expand that further? Are there any other avenues that you kind of use? Yeah, that's where video uh, comes in. I think if we look okay. at where, ag yeah, where agriculture um, is shown in mainstream media in, in a visual format is either landline uh, or farmer wants a wife too, quite contrary. Mm -hmm. um, I think there's a pretty pretty good opening for something to come in there and, and I'm not in terms of looking at taking it to people's living rooms. Um, I actually think we've got a, a huge opportunity to bring agriculture to the small screen and utilise the platforms that are already there. Yeah, good point. Um, 
Another question I had was how do you choose your targets for the stories that you're telling? Yeah, it's um, it's a bit of a mix really in terms of um, either coming through, yeah, just people that I've stumbled across and, and looking for. Yeah, generally the, everyone who I talk to, there's something that I personally really want to get out of chatting with them. Um, and, and so, yeah, depending on where I'm at in, in my life and, and what's happening, uh, I generally try and look for, for people in, in that area, whether it's yeah, in startup business or kind of corporates or um, inside the farm gate. Yeah, there's yeah. kind of a general interest in yeah, and probably a lot of networking as well, isn't it? That word of mouth. So you start a story or a conversation with somebody and then it leads you down another path with somebody else. So. Definitely. It's something I don't do well enough in terms of that. When I've got a guest on, yeah, recommend one or, or yeah, tag, tag a friend who, who should come on. So I, I really should get onto that more. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, another question, are you aware of others playing in the same space as you in other markets or do you have global ambitions, recognising your reach is already global? Uh, oh, do I have global ambitions? Probably from a yeah, an interest point of view. But, um, yeah, I think specifically looking at Australian agriculture, we, uh, we are a key exporter um, across a lot of groups. So I think naturally you can get that in-market fit of how, how things actually come together. So... Yeah, I, I would like to look uh, what what's happening more broadly in, in the space and seeing how we can yeah, really focus on the individuals and the stories that support that. Um, in terms of others playing in the space, probably uh, probably not so much. I, I think there's other people who are yeah doing media and, and various other things, but yeah, I think we're we're fairly unique uh, yeah in, in how we're doing it and and really taking kind of that sleeves up approach, I guess. Yeah, it's great. It's fantastic. We've got a couple of minutes left. I'm happy to open up um, to anybody who wants to unmute or uh, put up their hand uh, to put forward a question, please do. Uh, just another one. Uh, very inspirational, Ollie. It's so important for humans of agriculture to share their real stories. What tips do you have for encouraging people across our industry to share their day-to-day -day stories, highlight the positive things that we are doing with the environment, animal welfare, biodiversity, uh, et cetera? Yeah, I think, that, I think it comes back to nearly shoulder tapping your friends. I think, yeah, we're, we're, we're very community orientated, but in terms of Australia generally, we get that tall poppy piece, but in, like at the end of the day, what, what we're doing as part of the podcast or, or any of the conversations, it really is a one-on-one -on -one conversation in that moment. Um, there is no, there's, there's no, yeah, sign the dotted line and this has to be published. If, if people are unhappy with what they've put forward or they, they don't feel comfortable in it, then um, that story will stay between them and myself. So I think there's, um, yeah, basically, if you know someone who, who is doing something fairly extraordinary, um, well, yeah, even that they may see as ordinary, like shoulder tap your friends and, and let's get more people involved because I'm certainly going to need it to get to 10,000. <laughs> <laughs> so you welcome some submissions through to you if we've got some great nominations or people on the call want to, would like to put throw it forward some stories? Yeah, absolutely. And there's a few people on the call who I've already earmarked as people who I'd like to talk to as well. <laughs> Very good. Um, one final question, 11.45, uh, just recognising everybody's time for the day. Uh, Lizzie McClymont, she's actually a member of the Meat Business of Australia Committee and uh, works out at Morton Co, uh, up in uh, Brisbane way, Queensland way. Thanks, Ollie. Love your work. Would you have three quick takeaways for what we personally can do to promote our industry? Three quick takeaways. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I think first and foremost, um, promote what you're doing. So look kind of internally, I guess, at, at yourself. Um, what, are, what are you doing and, and how can you share that more broadly? If you're in a, in a business or other community organisations, how can you look kind of outside your sphere uh, of people um, in terms of what's happening? Um, geez, that's two. What's my third one? Um, I think, <laughs> I think, yeah, just, just find opportunities that, where you can have involvement. And I think, um, yeah, reduce that, potentially the, the fear factor that may be involved in it. I think, yeah, there's people love hearing stories. Um, and, and, yeah, a very good point. Go to the Meet Business <laughs> Women uh, in, in March as well. 
Yeah. Well, thank you so much on behalf of Meet Business Women for your time today, Ollie. Uh, and thank you, everybody, all the participants that joined today. As I mentioned, this has been recorded and it will be published to the Meet Business Women website, meetbusinesswomen.org, uh, in the coming week. Uh, so you can share that. It will be under the free resources, so you'll be able to share it with anybody, uh, colleagues, friends, etc., in the industry that were, or didn't get to see it today. Thank you so much, Ollie, for your time. Absolutely amazing to hear your story and, and hear about humans of agriculture. And we thank you so much. Thanks a lot, Catherine. Thanks everyone for coming along. It was good. Thank you. Chat to you.